Kaylin, and well, this is great. Nader gives it to her just the way a politician really should be talking. We could have had Nader, but no, everybody didn't want somebody be, that was, you know, so undynamic. But you don't have to be dynamic to be a president. You just have to have courage of your convictions, and you have to have some decent convictions. Okay, go ahead and let's run this. This is a great clip. Well, you don't see a flag pin here, do you? I don't. But here is what should be. You know what that is? I do. That what is the Constitution that? of the United States. And don't you think we should take care of it? We should, and we have been. But, but you know who's going to really take care of it? John S. McCain. That means if he becomes president, he'll move to, to criminally prosecute George W. Bush and Dick Cheney on about 15 criminal counts. No. Criminal war in Iraq, systemic torture, incarcerating Americans without no. uh, charges, denying them habeas corpus, snooping on millions of Americans without uh, court approval, and signing hundreds of bills saying, I, King George IV, will decide whether to sign them or not, or whether to obey them, rather, or not? Well, Has John McCain got the guts to do that? The Annotated News. All right. Well, we're going to put the call number up behind me, and uh, we only have 503-288-4442, just one number. So if you call in, we're going to have to make it uh, short and sweet. And uh, looks like they're having a hard time finding that. It, it's number three there, and then just cut it in. Oh, you probably have to clear the circuit. Hit clear, stop and clear. Okay, I'm remote controlling the control room from here. Well, we have uh, about 11 minutes left, and if you have any comments or questions, give a call. I hear the phone ringing already, but um, I guess I'll go in there and do the CG. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Anyway, um, there, there were a lot of other news items that I could have put on this show today, and you saw some of the items were dated back February 2nd. That's how far behind, you know, when you only have a show twice a month and these things are just boom, 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 hitting so fast, you can't even keep track of them, let alone there's a number up finally. But um, you, you notice the type of calls I've been getting lately too? I've had at least four people call up, maybe five people that were involved in armed uh armed forces or security or whatever um, and they're calling in and their whole viewpoint is changing it's not against me and this group we got a call go ahead caller yeah most of the stupid American sheeple voted for Obama because they didn't realize that it's a big new Brzezinski his campaign advisor was a founding member of the trilateral commission <laughs> and probably part of the dirty rats that were behind the 9-11 was an inside job. Uh, exactly. You know, but, and Brzezinski uh, kept talking about 9-11 before it happened. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, but, it was, uh, you know, I just want to say to the American uh, voting public that voted for Obama, or for McCain for that matter, bah. Well, yeah, and it's... It, it's funny, I mean, now I'm calling for law enforcement and politicians and whatnot to, to get behind the 9-11 movement, you know, saying, hey, look, you don't have to apologize or anything. You are in, get in the movement, you can say, hey, I w was on your side all the time, I just couldn't do it because I had a job that I you know, didn't want to lose, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's time for people to start realizing that 9-11 is not going to stay buried like the Kennedy assassination has. Um, we're. <laughs> Are you still there, caller? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, you know. You're saying losing a job. Well, there's a couple of vacant houses in my neighborhood, and uh, the you know the typical houses where people were uh, you know uh, upside down in them and just walked away from them. And uh, there was a guy who was there to inspect them. He was a different guy this time, and. Uh, 
he's a uh, out of work uh, architectural engineer. Guess what? And now he's making twelve dollars an hour driving around to these houses. Uh, what a waste! You know, we have so many homeless people. We could have the government rent those houses and put the homeless in them. Oh, yeah. You know, but the funny thing that is, is uh, when the guy told me that he was an architectural engineer, I went, bing, light bulb went off. And I said, 9-11. Of architects and engineers for 9-11 truth and started telling him about all this stuff. Oh, no, his mind was already made up. You couldn't convince this moron of anything. So <laughs> it's, it's no wonder why the guy is out of work because he's a moron because he just, uh, you know, he... Refused to, I says, well, I said, there's over 1,400 architects and engineers that have put their occupations on the line and have come out. I said, there's our firefighters for 9-11 Truth, airline pilots for 9-11 Yeah, did you call last week about the David Chandler video? No, I didn't call, no. Oh, huh? okay, somebody wanted to, I, I, had, I made some copies of the David Chandler, you can't see it in this light, I guess, the new 9-11 analysis video. I have copies down here, but I didn't. I wouldn't that. mind getting a copy of that. Can I just come down to the studio? or? Uh... You have to do it when I'm here, and the next time will be March 5th. Okay, I'll do that then. That's Thanks. That's between 4 and 6 p.m. Yeah, and... but I was trying to convince this guy um, that uh, I was walking around there while he was doing his uh, his work, basically, which consisted of taking pictures of himself um, uh dusting and mopping and stuff like that, which he wasn't really doing any dusting or mopping. He was just, he just making evidence. Down on the floor and <laughs> take a photo of it, you know, which was, I thought was kind of funny. But uh, he had like 60 houses to do that day. And then he, I think his last house was all the way out in Monmouth. And he said, well, he doesn't, he doesn't get paid if he has to drive back to Portland, which he does. <laughs> From the time he leaves Monmouth, he doesn't, which is what, an hour and a half drive. He doesn't get paid for that time. Of course, he's driving a company vehicle, but it was a real crappy little uh, <laughs> crap uh, vehicle that they gave him. And uh, so he doesn't get paid driving all the way back, but he's getting 12 bucks an hour, and he well, was an architect before that. But uh, i got to cut you off. We got We only have one phone line, and I want to get some more okay, calls. Okay, I'll let you go. Thanks for the work. Bye-bye. Hey, no problem. Thank you. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. Fully two years ago... Uh, I put forth the economic recovery plan that was drafted by Webster Tarpley, and the number one item on that list in you know to recover our economy was to put a moratorium on uh, foreclosures. No foreclosures for five years or whatever it takes to get stabilized. <coughs> Excuse me, but you're seeing all these houses. Okay, go ahead, caller. Hello. What What's on your mind? Oh, how you doing? It's good to talk to you. Go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, I was wondering, how do you explain the the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania? You know, the the. I think that was shot down by our military jets, but we don't really know. There's. Uh, I I don't have the name at the top of my list here, but there was a military an admission by somebody in a fighter wing group that they had scrambled and wound up shooting it down. But the thing is, the debris, I mean, there is evidence that supports that idea because when you have debris scattered over eight miles, that cannot happen by a plane hitting the ground. It has to be blown up to smithereens in the air and then just kind of float down. So that's kind of the scientific angle there. But weren't there people who called their family? And uh... There's a lot of controversy about that. Um, the FBI has come out in the Masawi trial in, in 2006, and their testimony about calls from the airplanes was that there were none. Uh, there were no completed cell phone calls, and the FBI has stated that there were no telephones on the backs, or the, if there were, they weren't functional on the back seats of the uh, seats of the airplane. So if you believe the FBI, which is our government, that's not a left-wing conspiracy group by any stretch, they say there weren't any calls. But whether there were or not, I mean, there's still a controversy over whether or not the calls might have been faked with electronic or software morphing and what, you know, all the con involved nonsense you have to go through to pull that off. And to the, the point I'm going to make, though, is whether or not that's true, we, we can spin our wheels worrying about 
trying to figure that one out. That's something that'll come out in the wash with an investigation. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of scientific information that isn't subject to any controversy. Um, and so it's, it's like the article I gave earlier about David Chandler withdrawing his name from the CIT website. Uh, he's trying to keep strictly oriented on the scientific method so that you know now or years later when you test his conclusions they will still be valid and you know i've said about the pentagon for instance i personally thought that it looked like a missile hit it and that a plane couldn't have made the hole that i observed in the pictures but i don't know anything about airplane crashes and it may turn out that they'll come out with a a set of pictures of what happened and make us look like idiots and try to discredit the whole group of us for that so I don't make any, any real, you know, uh, firm statements on that. I'll I'll wait and see. Well, uh, you have a lot more resources than I do. Obviously, maybe you could get a hold of some of the people, you know, family of the people that are on that flight and get testimonials from them, and then present them on your show. Okay. Well, be... one thing, you know, the story that we got is the "Let's Roll" came from that, where the passengers supposedly grouped together and and then raided the cockpit and yep. pulled the Arabs out and or maybe forced the plane to crash so that they couldn't hit their targets. And we know that that is nonsense. That is total nonsense because their source of that information was the flight data, what do they call it, the uh, cockpit yeah. voice recorder. And the cockpit voice recorder only records things in the pilot's cabin, not in the passenger cabin. So all that planning and the let's roll nonsense that was supposedly recorded could not have happened. And that, that's just my point from science. Okay. Well, thank you very much. For the yeah, and that's still a question mark, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling. And we probably have time for one more call if somebody wants to dial real quick. We're, we're sharing phone lines with another studio, so we don't have two phones today. But, um, oh, by the way, hey, go to that CG, uh, the, the very last CG, I think it's number nine, uh, the one that had the Psy Wars plan, if we can get to it. Okay, forget it. Anyway, watch your schedule. I've got a, a movie called Psy Wars running, and we just finished four showings of the David Chandler video that I've already shown. That's the good one to get. You, you ought to get 9-11 analysis with David Chandler. That's the one that showed a beam blasting off into outer space. And while it's in free air, go ahead, caller, the hey, beam Bill, explodes. Um, one of the things you've been talking about tonight, and I, I think is the biggest problem that we're, uh, we face for all the truthers out there, is that, as you said, some people, there's no way to convince them. You could show them <laughs> a video of George Bush cutting someone's head off and eating <laughs> the guy's throat, and they just wouldn't believe it because well, they wouldn't I might be not either, but... of it. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you just, it, it's so hard to convince people that, that won't listen to truth, and it's frustrating. But keep up the good fight. That's all I got to say. Right on. Well, we're, we're going to have a, a big special thing coming off on the anniversary of this year uh, in the, the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth are putting out something called experts speak out and it's a, a really good compilation of uh, a wide range of scientific opinions on the subject by the way right now you can see you can see my show on blip tv or you can go to my youtube channel 251 omega and my next show is march 5th so thanks a lot for watching and uh my name's bill olson you can find me on the Google by saying Bill Olson and 9-11 and you'll find a lot of my shows. Have a good one.